Bitcoin is 100,000 in 2021. Yeah. At what point does Bitcoin's value become so lucrative that bigger companies, perhaps battery companies, look at this and go, hmm, perhaps we can work our way around this and, and yeah. offer our technology? So one of the things I think really comes when it comes to battery technology is uh, everyone knows that whoever can solve the problem of storing power will have a massive market opportunity. Um, and where is power best monetized today? One of those is Bitcoin mining, right? If you look at, um, you know, uh, I'm an investor in a company that one of my business partners runs that essentially takes car tires and turns it into a number of commodities, including power. Well, if you sell that power into the grid, you can sell it for three cents, four cents, maybe five cents if you're really lucky. If you then go and you mine Bitcoin with that same power source, you can generate 25, 30, 35, 40 cents. There's a pretty material increase in the financial performance of your power consumption by mining Bitcoin versus selling into the grid. Even the power companies are selling their power for eight, nine, 10, 12, 13 cents. Mm -hmm. So mining Bitcoin is actually so lucrative compared to these other power consumption models that I think over time, more and more of them will start to move in this direction. We're already seeing some of them start, but I think really when that price rises over the next kind of 18 to 24 months is where you'll start to see some really big companies move into the space. Elon Musk. Look, he's got probably some of the best battery technology in the market. Um, and, you know, with Tesla, if all of a sudden those power walls either have slow sales uh, in terms of going to homes or he's able to figure out some kind of industrial uh, model, you know, I, I'm not one to say that he's not crazy enough to do it. Uh, <laughs> and and it's quite lucrative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and look, and, and we know that he's aware of Bitcoin, right? He's talked about it. He, he thinks that uh, paper money is going away. So he's very aware of kind of how all this is playing out. Um, again, it's probably a distraction for them in the short term. Uh, but at some point, I do think entrepreneurs realize, hey, if these power packs actually work how they're promised, uh, they can store power and I can use that to my advantage to mine Bitcoin, it wouldn't surprise me if somebody tries it. And you're comfortable then. We've talked about the PR situation that I think you have. You don't think you have. Um, I don't have any PR. It's, it's Bitcoin, <laughs> but, but I don't think that Bitcoin is uh, in a bad place either. No, but I do think as the conversation about sustainability yeah. and, and green technology continues and we're seeing that more and more even just in the last few months I do think this is one of the things that will keep coming up so you're gonna have to keep uh, talking about this but you are comfortable with the store of value argument for Bitcoin here versus utility value and transaction speeds because we did touch on that a little bit in the live show yeah so I think that um, store of value is really important you have to have store of value before you can have me medium of exchange and right. ultimately the store of value comes down to two things right one is security it can't disappear it can't be hacked etc um, and Bitcoin being the most secure computing network in the world is very secure, right? So, so we feel confident there. When it comes to price, what you want to see is over long periods of time, either you're preserving your wealth so the price stays flat or continues to increase. The monetary policy of Bitcoin relies on one thing, supply and demand economics. Artificially capped supply, if demand increases, price will go up, right? In US dollar terms. And so again, if you zoom out, over the last decade, it's the best performing asset. Over the last 12 months, up 150%. In the last, uh, you know, what, six weeks or so, it's up 30%. So it's continuing to do exactly what it's kind of built to do. Now, there's high volatility on an intraday basis. And so people look and they're like, oh my God, it was up 10%. It's down 6%. You know, and they kind of are Oil. emotional. Oil's been more volatile actually in the last <laughs> three months. And we'll, we'll give a crypto that. Yeah, but, but again, people who put their wealth and have a low time preference in Bitcoin have been rewarded very well with this store of wealth thesis. And so we tend to think that the non-correlation of traditional assets will continue to be a valuable um, kind of aspect of Bitcoin, uh, especially when you have geopolitical uncertainty or things like coronavirus, et cetera, where the traditional market's kind of go into chaos. You know, Bitcoin's used to five or 10% swings up or down in a single day. I'm, traditional markets, you know, literally uh, people freak out when that happens. And so I think that Bitcoin is um, kind of better positioned for the future world that we're going into over the next couple of years than any of the traditional assets. What 